I think John would have been very pleased to see his name attached to this prize. He was um, fearless, he was courageous, he was an excellent science journalist. He was willing to um, expose and entertain maverick ideas as long as they stood up to the tests of the rigours of scientific um, evidence. I think he, my late husband uh, had an unusual combination of supreme knowledge of science and uh, eloquence and, and clarity and expression. And he had been on The Guardian, he had been an academic, and then he got a job on The Guardian and realized it was more fun than anything he'd ever thought of. And I think he's always a supreme example of science journalism, and I think other people will do well to try to live up to his ideal. For Nature, the Maddox Prize means something that we try to do, that is, stand up for scientific values, be independently minded in our criticism of people outside science when they abuse science, and people inside science when they abuse the scientific process for their own ends. What we were looking for was people who had really gone above and beyond their role, their job, um, what we would expect of them, and to take responsibility for an area of public discussion. Pursuing a cause uh, doggedly, uh, um, investigating the arguments, presenting them well to, to the public. The quality of, of uh, communication was very important because that was close to John Maddox's um, uh, own heart. The judging was really challenging. We had to look at really quite diverse situations and things that people were dealing with. People dealing with things in countries like China uh, and trying to publish around issues which were contentious there, quite different often from the sort of environment perhaps we see in the UK and in the US. One of the difficulties was the embarrassment of riches that we had with the breadth of nominations and also a broad set of criteria for this um, award. Um, we found considerable difficulty in deciding what kind of person we might give the prize to. Should it be a campaigning journalist defending the principles of science over a wide area? Should it be an active researcher finding themselves in a controversial topic and deciding to pursue it rather than simply moving safely on to something else? I think the degree of courage involved in the face of really acute hostility um, made the particular people we had stand out. And then we finally agreed, as it can happen in judging, you suddenly think we were in a fight about all this, and then suddenly consensus emerges, and then we realize who was the best choice, so we went for that. We had some wonderful entries, um, but in the end we did choose two people and I'll announce them one by one as it were. So the, the first person I want to announce can't be with us tonight. His name is Fang Shi Min. He's a Chinese science writer. He was trained as a biochemist. He runs a website in Chinese, which in English translation is called New Threads. Um, and what he absolutely thrives on, but it requires a lot of uh, courage to do so. But I say he thrives, he's got a huge amount of recognition within China for this activity, is um, exposing scientific fraud amongst the academic community, uh, bad, bogus medicine amongst the medical community. So he covers the whole territory in that sense of what the Maddox Prize is about. So um, <coughs> he's not here, but I believe we have a little video from him, as it were, and then somebody here will come and take the prize in his I am truly honored to receive Jian Maddox Prize. Science in China faces great challenge from superstition, pseudoscience, anti-science, and scientific misconduct. There are more and more Chinese people realize this is a big problem and are standing up for science. I consider this award as an acknowledgement of our efforts from international science community, and I deeply appreciate it. Thank you. The other prize winner this year is Simon Wesley. Hey. Simon 
is a psychiatrist, as many of you will know, but uh, it's worth just recording that um, his efforts have been especially, above all, devoted to looking into chronic fatigue syndrome and also into the, um, the problems, if you like, beset by military personnel and veterans. Um, he has suffered acute hostility. I think he's the first, having talked to him about this, he's the first to acknowledge that there are other people in his discipline who have also suffered acute hostility. Um, however, I think partly because of the very public role in the midst of that hostility that he's been willing to adopt, I think that singles him out and accounts for um, his nomination. So um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very great pleasure to um, acknowledge Simon as a very worthy winner for this prize. Simon, do come forward and say something. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. It's a fantastic honor and a delight, and in particular because uh, I did read the rubric for the prize yesterday, and I don't know if you noticed, but it did say um, it's mainly for young scientists. <laughs> <laughs> it's not about me, it is about there's a very large number of people who've been doing the same kind of research that I have, who've had the same kind of intimidation uh, and harassment over the years, any one of whom could be here. And I think for all that very large group of scientists, clinicians, academics, um, this is very much about recognizing what they've done and how we have advanced the field for the benefit of patients at a cost, that's true, but it's very nice that people actually do recognize um, that it was worthwhile.